Hi, my name is 66. I make City of Blank for Webtoon Originals. I am on a PC using a Wacom tablet. I am still using Photoshop. I feel like I'm one of the last <laughs> Webtoon original artists that is not using Clip Studio. And I actually do recommend Clip Studio, but I have not fully switched over. So today I'm going to be going over how I make an average panel in City of Blank. The main thing I want to go over today is how to like work efficiently. If you went to Paul's workshop earlier, it was all about efficiency and like working smart. And I'm going to try to kind of show you guys some examples of that because uh, on average, I am producing 60 panels a week on average. And I'm going to show you just exactly how that gets done. This is like what an average, this is actually a little bit more detailed than my storyboards often are. We're going to take this to a hopefully finished panel. Let's see how much I can get done in 30 minutes. So, so just some very quick typesetting. I don't know how uh, uh, typesetting is done in Clip Studio, but this is how I quickly do it in Photoshop. Um, and then like what Paul was saying, um, about making actions and stuff. Uh, how I normally make my speech bubbles is I just do these, like, I make the shapes and then I have an action set up to instantly make a speech bubble because I color my speech bubbles. Also, this is uh, my very sloppy color palette sheet. So throw that color on there. I are, the action already locks the layers so I can just fill them in. Gradient. I have my settings set to default to what I need for that stroke. And there's a speech bubble. It took like not very long. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did pre-prepare this uh, little storyboard, and I do hand draw my panels. So here, so here's where the magic really starts, and by magic I mean things get really, really technical. And I feel like I'm going to destroy the magic of webtoon making here because. Um, this is Rex's asset sheet. Um, I hate drawing his mask, so I try to draw his mask as little as possible, as well as him as little as possible. And this page right here is how I am able to draw 60 panels a week. I know a lot of artists uh, do have asset sheets, but I don't see many actually doing colored asset sheets. And so I'm going to go over how you can like kind of prepare a sheet like this and kind of how you can start to think about how to approach assets. So for this panel, we're going to be going like this with this kind of cold blue lighting. And as you can see, um, I have this like kind of nighttime street lighting. So over here, I have all, and here's my, you know, my nighttime lighting settings. In here, I have all of my lightings saved. And I work with curves, um, which is kind of an unusual setting or unusual way to work. But um, you can do this like with multiply layers and such too. Uh, let's see. So I'm going to be using like this really blue lighting. So all I do, I have these settings. And like I said, you could probably do this with like multiply layers too. And I take these over to the Rex asset sheet. And what I do, everything is in a mask layer. So all my shading is done with masks. And I do this because to change my lighting, all I have to do is take those masks and swap them to a different setting. 
in addition to that, I also... Oops, I forgot to grab it. In addition to that, I also do these overlays just to kind of exaggerate the colors even more. I change the line art color. So now we have this kind of like very cool, like overcast lighting opposed to... And Rex is all done, like at least his mask and stuff are. And that's how I draw his stupid mask <laughs> 60 times a week, or however many panels he's in. Oops, I did the wrong thing. But um, also, if you work in Clip Studio, this works a lot faster because now I've got Photoshop loading. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah. Um, it really speeds stuff up. So I work in a lot of layers. So I could actually. Um, grab this, whoops, grab this torso while I'm at it. But I'm afraid it would actually be like so fast that, well, actually, I don't know. Yeah, let's, let's, uh, we're already like 10 minutes in, so, and I'm taking a while to explain things, so. Yeah, and as you can see, this is obviously a lot, lot faster than drawing Rex from scratch. I always draw his, uh, I always paste his bangs separately. And now all I have to draw is his arms. I usually make like an asset folder just in case I do need to move stuff around. So now all we have left to draw are his arms. And I only have to draw his hand because I've got his hand right here. But we'll get back to that. It's kind of hard to place it accurately without drawing the rest of his arm. I do apologize if this is not the best drawing of an arm. I am very rushed at the moment. <laughs> So all we're going to do is like make sure to draw this arm um, above the asset layer. So that is above that. And then, like I said, now we've kind of got, it's kind of small. It's almost got to be a little off screen for this. I do. I have an, like an action set up to just fill with black. And then basically I try to make assets for anything I get tired of drawing over and over and I definitely get tired of drawing these uh, like knives over and over. So um, I have it set up so that like I can put different types of hands. This is all asset sheets are also like a work in progress. That's why this is like bright green because I haven't finished it yet. Um, I didn't have a panel coming up yet where he was just standing around. So um, I didn't need this this yet. So I just kind of draw them as I need them. So make that hand and then we go and paste it in here. You can kind of warp stuff around. So. And then put that above. And then we're going to draw his other arm under the assets because it's like behind this torso. So we're going to make another line art layer. Um, I make my asset sheets, um, I, they're on a very as-I-need basis. Um, like I said, like I started off with this like head <laughs> um, reference, and as I got to these angles in the comic, I drew them. Once I actually need a 
panel of Rex looking this direction, I will draw it and it will be added to the asset sheet. I don't think you need to like sit down and like spend a week on an asset sheet. Just simply make them as you go is my advice. Anyway, uh, okay, and then just... So our line art's already done, because all we had to draw was arms on him. <laughs> to, uh, hide the rest of his torso, we don't need that. So here is how I do flats. Um, I know... Uh, clip has a far more efficient way of doing uh, flats, but I don't use clip, so this is how I do it in Photoshop. I will fill everything in with a very bright color. This all is a little bit sloppier than usual because I'm working on a very tight time restraint. And then... I have Rex's color palette sheet. I normally have this like in another screen, but just for showing you guys. Then just fill everything in. And I always use this, like, I bring this little color swatch over here. Oop, that's the wrong thing. So then I have this action set up so that, you know, under this line art, I have this ugly green and bright red. And I have an action set up so that it will just instantly fill with the line art color. So now I basically have like line art under my line art and this makes it for really easy cell shading in Photoshop. So, two. And then we're going to take those curves again that we used on his mask and stuff. And we're going to apply it to those couple of panels we needed to shade. Or those couple of those two arms. <laughs> Going to turn those off for now. Rex is often completely headless while I draw him because <laughs> I have to turn off the asset sheets. And obviously, I don't think anyone needs to like completely uproot their process, but I hope it like um, gives you a different way of thinking of how to approach certain things. And then like I said, um, I have it basically set up so I have like line art under my line art and it allows me to very quickly shade. And then last little touch for the shading is I do this overlay layer um, just to make things a little bit more saturated and pretty. Lower my settings a little bit. And a lot of this is just finding what works. Right, and so there's a fully colored Rex in um, about 15 minutes. Um, we're not done though. Also, I forgot his ponytail. So let me take like three seconds to grab his ponytail. That's how long it takes. Hair is very annoying to draw, so I'm not drawing it again. So anyway, um, this doesn't just apply to like character assets. I'm going to show you how you can make some really awesome backgrounds in very, very quick time. Though it does take time to actually draw them originally, but once you have them set up, um, 
So here is a background I use a lot. Um, the last time I did it, it was like a sunset. So we're going to, like I said, take that blue lighting again, or that overcast lighting. And we are going, whoops, wrong. Where is my, there it is. There we go. And just like the head assets, we're going to change out this lighting so that we can instantly get like this overcast setting. Yeah, you saw sky spoilers. <laughs> so, uh, and then switch out. So now we have this like uh, really overcast background. We're going to steal this, get Photoshop a moment. So, as you can see, this file is massive compared to my other files. Like I said, we're just going to compile a really quick background, and but this is just how fast you can make backgrounds with the use of assets. And then in here, so here's my skies, but as you can see, I have other skies set up. Um, like here's a sunset, here's like a nice sunny day, but we're going to be taking the overcast sky. And I know Clip Studio Paint has some like really good skies set up, so. But I actually really like drawing clouds, so I make my own. <laughs> And then, for more ambient, more much like the skies, I have these different backdrops and different lightings. Like here's the normal daytime skyline, but we're gonna go with this blue overcast. And as you can see, um, all I've had to do with this background is change out lighting. I haven't actually had to draw a single thing in this background. I mean, I did draw <laughs> it a while ago. Now on top of that, um, here's like an example of like a background asset sheet. I use these a lot in backgrounds. Like I was going to put this lamp post in here, but I think it's a little too busy. So um, anyway. I'm going to mask this. I'm going to blur it a little bit. Oops, I messed up. Messed up with the sky. Scoot it over a little bit. I'm realizing we're running really short on time, so. I'm trying to very quickly get through this. I wanted to show you guys some more examples of assets, but um, like I said, we're running kind of short on time. And then I might sometimes lighten up a background just to make the character stand out a little bit more. So here's an almost completed panel. Um, after this, I do one more lighting pass. Um, and each background or each lighting has its own settings that I make sure to save. So for this particular one, I do these adjustment layers. So divide, overlay, and saturation. So divide, overlay, and saturation. I will do like, a, and you see this is gonna make, make things more blue. And this just kind of makes the entire thing prettier. So, here is a nearly completed panel. I do, or hold on one second, let me. I also, if you don't use masks, I highly advise getting used to masks because they allow you to do stuff like this. So his like knife is like popping out of the panel. 
So the very last step I do is um, I have these lightings set up. So that's the lighting group. I'm about to instantly make this panel look like 10 times cooler with these uh, lighting settings I have. So all of these are different lighting settings and they're like a bunch of Gaussian blurs and adjustment layers. And I picked this one because I think it's one of the, I picked this entire lighting because I think it's one of the prettiest ones. So with the press of a button, we're going to, there we go. And that's how we get a finished panel in under 30 minutes. <laughs> so just uh, to show you kind of the how much impact those lighting layers make, there's like before and after. So if you guys have any questions, I can try to take them in these like last couple of minutes. Oh, and then I'll sometimes add like a little. Animate flurries. Because I make everything look more dramatic. Uh, I do have a comic I want to do after City of Blank. It's a very big work in progress. <laughs> Let's see, how often do you need to draw a panel from scratch, no assets? Um, ironically, the ones I draw most from scratch are like the kind of sillier panels, like comedic panels, where they're kind of goofy looking and not like all dramatic and anime and stuff. And a lot of times, if there's like background characters or characters I don't draw as often, um, a lot of times I won't have assets for them. Also, I did want to say, um, like, I feel like a lot of people are thinking like, oh, well, your character has masks like you don't have to worry about expressions to which i um respond with here is like desmond who has a bunch of expressions and his like i said his library of expressions is ever growing like i said this is just a way for you guys to start thinking differently about assets do i prefer drawing action -y scenes or comedy scenes definitely comedy scenes um I think it's a lot more fun to draw their like goofy expressions, ironically, um, even though they're all wearing masks. <laughs> but yeah, like here's an example of uh, compiling a Desmond. Oh, I only have one more minute. I don't know if I'm gonna get to do it. So like here's an example of how you could quickly compile a character with like actual expressions, even though this is a really deadpan expression. <laughs> uh, I work at 300 DPI, so I thought about for future comics when I don't have to when I don't have masks, uh, I'll probably just draw the eyes uh, as assets, and then I will just draw the pupils manually. So just something to think about. Uh, canvas size is 1600. Oh, for the asset sheet, the asset sheet is massive. <laughs> All right, thank you guys for coming.